This is BMB. Um, we got Brent, um, aka Bam, in the house right there. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Good, good. We got Meldrick, aka Melbourne, as well. Join us. Our special guests are joining us next week. Join us next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right. But yeah, we'll we'll still talk a little bit about it today, so y'all have an idea of where we're going to be going. Uh, with the conspiracy theories, um, but we also have some other topics we'll be discussing. Uh, Biden, Biden's running mate. Uh, we're talking about uh, sports and even uh, some youthful moments that happened uh, this past week that I'm sure y'all heard of. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Conspiracy theories, they've been around for a long time from um, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, uh, 911, what else? New, uh, the, the floods in New Orleans with Katrina, with the levees, how they gave out, and even with, the, with this coronavirus, you know, and, and people trying to say yeah, some type of conspiracy theories with this, you know, with it being population control, you know. I mean, I don't want to say I'm a conspiracy. I'm a conspiracy theorist, but it does it do make you want to think. The reason why I can say okay. The reason why I'm I might say some of it might be a little true with the population control is because like what I would keep telling y'all, 2043, 2043, when this nation becomes majority of people of color, and um, you know, they say whites are not not having children at the rate where Latin, the Latin community and the black community are having children. So they're trying to say that that pop the white population might be losing control and things that the Republican Party that are that what they are doing is with the Supreme Court justice. Like I keep trying to tell y'all, they are they I mean uh, Mitch McConnell just this past week. And oh yeah, that's another thing. I know y'all saw that what happened with uh, Governor Cuomo, what he was talking about, how much he puts into the federal pot versus how much Kentucky puts into the federal pot. And he said, just he said to Mitch, just give me my the money that we put in back. Because they he said we put in about 115 billion, where Kentucky takes out 150 billion out of the federal pot. Well, that's here you no know, there, no uh, whatever. But you know that that's something to think about. But also, Mitch McConnell, he said he can't wait till they come back from their hiatus, their vacation, to start appointing these federal white wing judges. So, what does this mean? Perfect example in Wisconsin, you, the election that happened in Wisconsin, and matter of fact, there are 19 cases of coronavirus from people going out voting. So that shows you right there, they don't care anything about life, about human life. So um, the, um, the Supreme Court voted for voting to continue in Wisconsin, right? Even though Joe Biden, he, he won it, but there was a Supreme right. Court seat that was up in the state of Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. what happened? The Republicans lost. The Democrat won that seat. The Republicans lost. Republicans mm -hmm. were harping on trying to make sure a lower voter turnout they win more they, they win more higher voter turnout democrats win they still lost so right. but the thing is what if there would have been a more of a democrat supreme court fighting for i mean let's just mm -hmm. be real the republicans they not fighting for us and just think about it they're putting at the ages between 35 and 45 if they're there for 40, 50, 60 years, I mean, that's getting into our kids' lives, right. you know. You know, so they're there for a lifetime. So anything where it comes to your civil rights, yes, there might be a Democrat presidency, they might have the Senate, and they might have the House. But once if, they, if there's a case that goes to the Supreme Court and you have all these right-wing judges up there, they're going to vote that down, whatever it might be that we might be voting for. To your point about the judges that the Republicans are appointing, they are trying to take over the judicial mm -hmm. system. They're trying to get their views, their issues on um, those paths. Um, and it, it is evolved. Now, a lot of it's evolved around these, um, these seats, 
these Senate seats, right. these House seats, they control a lot of the Senate right now. So a lot of those appointees, they can get pushed through. Right. Uh, whereas exactly. when Obama was in office, I think they said he appointed like about 19 judges or so. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. um, some things were still held up because the other party held it up. They, they wouldn't right. do it on time. They would let things expire. So now that the Republicans have their guy in office, they can get a lot of this done, a lot of this pushed through, and they can pretty much try to take over. Any issues that we care about, you know, some of these liberties and freedoms that we care about. Exactly. Can be voted against, can be, you know, if they have a judge who doesn't agree with things that, exactly. you know, the minorities agree with. But that's, that brings it to another point. That's why mm -hmm. voting is important, especially in these, um, in these local elections, in uh, Senate, you know, House elections, where someone's running for a seat, these, those votes are specifically very important. It's important right. that right. if we get a Democratic president in office, that we try to take back control of the Senate. Uh, I think we have control in the House right now. We have more Democrats in the right. House. We had control in the House, uh, Republican control the Senate. Remember, I think I mentioned to y'all before with local elections, you know, isn't it kind of funny when local elections going on, like school boards, um, police chiefs and stuff like that. They really don't make too much noise about that because they don't want a, a large turnout because what if more of us young black men like us or just young people, period, started getting out to these local elections started going to these school board meetings, trying to see what's going on. When the Black Panther Party started taking, when they started becoming in power, mm -hmm. it, it's not illegal to carry firearm, is it? No, look at the protesters in, mm -hmm. uh, in Michigan or these Thank other you. states. I'm glad you think, said that. Think about what they're doing. They're, they're just walking around with firearms. They're protesting, mm -hmm. you know, the reopening the, of the country. In 1960, 69, the Black Panther Party did pretty much the same thing. They mm -hmm. went to Sacramento, they went to Ronald, because Ronald Reagan was the governor then, and they tried to tell me, hey, y'all can't be here. He said, man, we are following the laws. We can be here with our firearms. Mm -hmm. The right. next day, they put in law that you cannot bring firearms to the uh, state capitol. You know, Biden's in the polls. I got for right now. I think I heard he's leading in certain polls um, against the mm -hmm. president. Um, he's also trying to pick a running mate. Um, there are some groups out there who are trying to uh, push him to pick a black woman running mate. You know, have y'all heard anything yep. about that? You know, what what do y'all know? But the most important thing now is him picking the right running mate. Now, you talking about Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren. They said they can get those Midwest voters. You already got the Midwest voter because he's in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so he's why do you, he already got that. What yeah. you need, you need somebody with a progressive view and I'm sorry, a, a woman of color. Mm -hmm. And the only person that I see, and a lot of people not, may not agree, I'm going with Stacey Abrams. Yeah, I'm going with Mother Abrams. They, she's been on, uh, really, I guess, pushing here lately. And she has. Yeah, yeah, because she's. Uh, I know she said, you, you know, if you don't raise your hand, you won't get seen. That's you know, right. So she's really pushing to to become that vice president nominee. Uh, uh, another one they looking at is Com uh, Senator Kamala Harris. Yeah. But my thing is, she's a prosecutor. She wasn't already looked at as the best person to be running for president. Now, mm -hmm. for if anything, I would pick Kamala Harris as my attorney general. Mm -hmm. Val Jennings from um, from um, Florida. She's a she was a police chief. She was mm -hmm. a senator, now a congressman, and she was also one of the head managers in an impeachment trial of Donald Trump. Now, she would be good, but a lot of people ain't gonna like her because she was what a cop. Mm -hmm. But she. If you look at her actual work, she actually did a lot of good things in the community that she was, the city that she was the mayor in, and mm -hmm. in the city that she governed. So she she did a she did a lot of good work. But you know, you just have to look at your pros and cons. And then the governor of Michigan, she she's 
she's starting to become more popular. Right. Um, cause, and, and she, I mean, she's a very strong willed woman. So mm-hmm. that would be a good pick. But I, I, a woman of color, I mean, it would, I know Joe said he wants to put a woman on the Supreme Court, which we do need. We do need that a woman of a person of color on the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. But this running mate, I think it's going to need to be a person of color because if you look at it, Joe campaign was dead before South Carolina. Jim Clyburn, when he came out and endorsed Joe Biden, that opened up the floodgate. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bishop Paul Martin was singing lovely. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let them both come on in. Let them come on in. <laughs> and they did. I mean, I, he won every county in South Carolina. And it then Super Tuesday came. Mm-hmm. I mean, he won right here in Texas. A lot of people didn't think. But I think with the endorsement of Beto, Beto, he has a great big fame here in the state of Texas. That helped. And then, then you had... Uh, Buddha Judge and yeah. um, uh, uh, Clover oh, they came here to Texas and then was endorsed. So all that just a boom, boom, boom effect. But yeah. I mean, I mean, a lot of black people they're saying, "Hey, we we we, are, we saved you, Joe, and we 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 need the, you need a black running mate." Yeah. So let's move on, y'all, to the next thing. Um, so let's talk about Brian Corn, uh, the pastor. Uh, one of the pastors, I would say, that's still been having church. Um, there's something he said here recently. Uh, Brent, I think you have the recording of that and you wanted to play that. And so after you play uh, that, we can yes, talk about it um, and get everyone's opinion on it and see what y'all think. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe it with every fiber of my being. No evil shall befall us. No plague shall come nigh dwelling. I believe Psalm 91. I believe Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. My question to you is, do you believe it? You can't live off my faith. Habakkuk chapter two, verse four said, the just shall live by his faith. The question I have to you today that I'm led to tell you, you can't live off of my faith, but you got to live off of your own faith. This is a time when you build yourself up on your most holy faith. Jews say you do that by praying in the Holy Ghost. Lebo sotola makikanda la la casa. That's how you build yourself up. There's an enemy among us, but we must find ourselves in an enormous amount of prayer. And you got to stay in the Word, just like naturally. You know, when you go to the doctor and you have some kind of infection, don't they boost you up with a bunch of antibiotics? Don't they give you a bunch of medicine to keep you built up? Well, that's what you're going to have to do. You can't walk around here believing that it won't get you, and you're not building yourself up in that Word. The Word of God works. And if you believe that, you'll have divine exemption. Does the devil fight my body? Of course, just like he fights your body. Did I get the shakes? Yep. Did I cough? Yep. Did I uh, 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 feel pain in my body? Whatever. One brother told me he felt like somebody had jumped in. I felt bad. But guess what I did? I pressed through and I fought through. Now I told you if you want to go to the hospital and get checked because you're going through in your body, go ahead. But don't tell them you go to KCC. Please tell them you go to First Baptist Elevation or St. Mattress Methodist Church. Let's fight the good fight of faith. As you know, this Sunday is our big Sunday on giving. My pastor called me today. He's really working on me. And just stay tuned so you can know what we're going to do. As of right now, we have church Sunday morning and Sunday night. But I I just want you to hear the Lord and hear the heart of your pastor. Fight the good fight of faith and believe the word of God. No time for television if you're not strong enough right now. Stay in that word. Fight the good fight of faith. And hold on to what God has said. The devil fights. Weapons form. But they don't have to prosper. 
you that are listening under the sound of my voice right now, I command you to live, not die. I speak to your respiratory system. I speak to your lungs. I speak to your taste buds and speak to your smelling. I ground the activity of the enemy. I terminate his movement. I oppose whatever he's trying to do undercover. By the authority of the blood and the power of the sacrifice of the lamb, I command you to be healed today. Walk in it. Walk in your healing. You don't need no compliment. I'm going to tell you right now. You go to the doctor, they're going to tell you got it. But here's the word of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? That's our word. I tested positive for faith. Be encouraged. I'm healed. I'm delivered. You be healed so that you can have divine exemption from the coronavirus. More grace. There you have it. That is Prophet Brian Corn saying he tested positive for faith. So what you think, fellas? It was interesting. Y'all are men of faith. What y'all think? But I just don't think you can, I just don't think you should tell your membership to, to encourage them to lie <laughs> if you don't still have church. If you don't still have church, then be bold enough to tell them, hey, if you come up sick, then let us know. Tell them you go to my church, you know. You still have a church. You still. Yeah, he, yeah, did, he, he did say that. Uh, don't tell them you go to my church. Right. That's that right. Means if, he, if they tell them, they're going to come to his church and shut him down. And shut him down. He right. don't want that. Right. But you still, you still, what do you, I don't know. I guess the stay at home order, you're still not going by those orders. So I just don't, I don't think, I don't think it's a good look. I get you have faith, which I understand. We, we all have to have faith, especially with what's going on now. Um, you got to have faith, especially even if you get some, you want to have right. faith to believe God to heal you because you can. But we also, what a lot of people have been saying, I think Brandon, Melvin, y'all been saying it too, you got to have wisdom. You know, you don't want to put yeah. your, your flock in harm's way, which it sounds like that's what he's doing. And then right. he's telling them, uh, if you do get sick, lie about it. Don't tell them where you got sick at, you know, you know, but then after you, you know, Tell them you got sick, then go and pray. You know, actually don't lie. To, you know, it just don't sound right. It's just like a right. it's a rabbit hole. Do one thing after another. Well, they just prevent right. it, yeah. Brian. Don't you know? Go online. Don't have all these members coming at once. You know, you can do so much more. You know, just be wise. Be, you know, handle it in a, in a better way. So it just don't to me. It don't look good. Right. Yeah. And the Bible right. says in James, if you lack wisdom, ask God for it. If that was the case, if, I mean, if, that, if that was the case for them to shut down the church, you wouldn't even have live streams. And so I mean, right. that's, they just don't want you to gather, and it's for obvious reasoning. And, and, and people just they people just don't want to listen. And I'm like, dog, just if you just do it, the quicker we'll be over this situation versus you trying to go with your own thought. Lean not to your own understanding. Thank, thank you, man. They just do, <laughs> right. and they just and people just just be oblivious to what what the orders mm -hmm. are and what you. I mean, they they are there to help us get past this. I mean, and people mm -hmm. just don't want to. They don't want to listen. They want to do their own thing, and and that's going to mm -hmm. just cause us to stay in this situation longer. So. Well, Brad, sometimes we we can be hard headed. We just can, and I'm yeah. you got to be honest. <laughs> That may it may be a, it may play a part why minorities are experiencing at a higher rate in this virus. Yep. But sometimes we just don't listen, and so and that's what that, that right there kind of shuts them. Sometimes shuts down my conspiracy theory thoughts because we can be our own worst enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And yeah. if we can, I'm a. I want. I want you to. We want that link I sent you. I want you to post it on the page. Okay. I will. I want y'all to. I want y'all to check it out. There was a video that. Uh, that's been, you know, going across uh, social media where these uh, these young people that they, they threw a house party, and I believe it was in Chicago, and um, and it looks like it was it, it was well over a hundred people in that place. It looked like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, because people were packed in there like it was the club, 
and they had masks on. So you 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 understand that there's something there. So you brought the mask, but yet you it's useless. You might as well just went in there with no mask because if you you're not going to prevent anything from happening because you're so close to somebody. If they sneeze or cough next to you, the mask ain't going to do nothing. Nope. It's just going to be right there on you. He, I mean, it's, it's, it's dumb. That's what I'm going to say. Dumb. Dumb, yeah. And, I mean, back to the Brian Karn thing. One thing he said, he said his, his pastor's been getting on him. I, I'm thinking his pastor's getting on him, telling him to still operate in faith. I think his pastor telling him to continue. That, that, that's what oh, I got at. Okay. okay. That, that's so, what I got out of it. And so there, okay. So, so he's I mean, under pressure. It, it's like he's under pressure. It's okay. like you got to meet these quotas. You got to get this money in. Mm. I mean, Mel, you you work in a in a that in that section where y'all got to meet quotas. I worked in retail banking where we had to meet quotas. Yeah. Bra Braxton, you got to meet quotas. I mean, and yeah. you got they he you got to risk lives to meet quotas if that. Mm. If that's the case, that I might have seen that totally wrong. Mm -hmm. But I mean, not see the numbers of pastors and bishops in the Church of God in Christ alone who have passed away from the coronavirus. Right. It's past thirty. Thirty pastors and bishops, and I'm not even talking about lay members, armor bearers, uh, regular members. Uh, Bishop John Drew, J. Drew Shear just buried his mother. His mother, yeah. This past Friday, mm -hmm. from the coronavirus, I mean, they they streamed the service, and I'm pretty sure it was for his father, Bishop John Shear, because he can't even he couldn't be there because he has it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, that's eye opening right there. It is hitting home for us as saints right. that right. these great men and women of God are dying from this. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you black, white. Democrat, Republican, Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever you might be. Right. If you got if you if you a soul, you got a body, you got some lungs, it can right. get you. Yeah. And and Brent too, even and now that you say that, Brian Carr not the only one. He's not the only, he's not the, he's only, not the only one. one. There's some, there's other ones out there. There's other ones out there. I, I saw a video that, today of a pastor in the right. You know, there's other ones out there that's doing the same thing so he's not the only one not to just think no, him out because there's other ones out there doing it but it's it's we we hurt ourselves we hurt ourselves hurt, right and uh, one pastor was on uh, I, it's one pastor was saying he worried about workers but then somebody on his comment said did you hear about the barber who was still cutting hair that caught it and died and then I think she also put, did you hear about the pastors that have uh, that are dying from this left and right? I'm just like, open your eyes and just look. You ain't even got to be deep. You ain't got to even be deep in the Holy Ghost to see this. Just open up your natural eyes and be like, wow. Right. Okay. And, and Brian Carr saying, get out of the TV. This is what you need to be using, Brian. The, t the internet. TV, Wi-Fi, whatever it is to get the word out, to keep mm -hmm. you safe. Right. Yeah. I mean, we don't want nothing to happen to you either, uh, Prophet Brian Corn, because right. he, he, he ain't too much older or younger than us. But, can, we, um, can we talk about that a little bit, Braxton? About the uh, testing and reopening. reopening. Yeah. And that's another, part of, that's another part of this conspiracy theory that you got Governor Kemp saying he open he's opening up the I mean businesses and he said barbershops uh nail salons and bowling alleys mm -hmm. he yeah. distinctly said and you know me and Mel, me, and Justin if you listen that was our thing bowling yes yeah. but anyway he said he wanted to open those back up so my thing is who is that going to get mostly? That's going to get mostly our community when he said barbershop, nail <laughs> salon. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to keep social distancing, cutting my hair or doing my feet in my hands? Yeah, I don't think you can. You, you can. You can. Now, and now this is this is just my opinion. Okay. And, and I'm speaking for the for those 
ones who um who make a living right right that. right yeah because they right now they're out of work uh some of them may be trying to still do something if they can you know every so every, every so you know every so often um mm -hmm. but like i got in my opinion even though that you are close i think that you could possibly still be uh safe like True. say for example you go get a you go get a haircut or you go get your hair done or you go get your feet done you know whatever the nail salon see before the person gets in the chair you sanitize it right most mm -hmm. of the time those those people already wear gloves sometimes they even wear a mask True. so they can continue to wear gloves they can continue to wear a mask they can make sure all their supplies it's are clean, sanitized right? clean when the person gets out of the chair they can sanitize it and disinfect it again and so i mean you can I think there are ways to be able to do that stuff and be very sanitized, uh, be very sanitized mm -hmm. because in that industry, you have to be sanitized anyway right. because you don't know ringworms and all that type of stuff can get passed around if you're not clean, mm -hmm. you know, so and, and all kinds of germs and stuff. So I think you can, I, in my opinion, I think that you, if you are sanitary enough, you can actually do those things. And like I said, and those people will have to be, will be able to earn a living without them having to go try to find work somewhere else true. That's, true. that's actually working. Like the only other place they'll be able to find a work at is a grocery store or, uh, or something like that, you know, but I mean, but if that's your, if that's the, the heart and soul of your income is cutting hair, doing right. hair, nails, mm -hmm. uh, all that kind of stuff. I mean, they're, they're, they're in, they're struggling right they're, now. They're very so struggling. I, but, and like I said, Right, and so in my opinion, I think they could get away with that. The bowling alley, just hold off. The bowling alley, people will go bowling when we when it's all when the clear when we're in the clear. You can open the bowling alley back up. I mean, I don't and unless you unless that's your bowling alley, and you own it and you and you doing all of that type of stuff, you you're not really suffering personally. That's just that that company and that company got enough money to where they'll be able to survive for a couple of months while we you know while we going through this but like like i said just for the people who are actually cutting hair and doing and, and uh, beauticians barbers nail mm -hmm. techs and stuff like that who that's right. their income you know that's what their lifeblood is on on that income i think they're suffering and so i think i like i said in my opinion i think they could be sanitary enough to where you could actually do that and i think some barbers yeah. even up here they doing where they come they coming they going to you they cutting you outside like like they driving two people doing right. haircut and they're doing mm -hmm. it outside and mm -hmm. you know yeah. and that makes you and i know one person he um he he lets the person see them cleaning his clippers before he gets started on them mm -hmm. i mean and you know just give you reassurance that they that they clean yeah there's, there's ways yeah. to reopen and you got certain states taking precautions so they are they're doing the reopening but they're doing it the right way they're not they're taking uh they're listening to advisors so like health advisors right. medical advisors on how to reopen and if you're going to reopen reopen in stages and then have you know maybe kind of like Mildred was saying maybe have you know maybe so many people in at one time or clean after right. another person or have people spread out so far right so you you open or have you know parking spaces out so far apart you know so people are not really interacting right. or contacting each other so you open um, right right. Away. yeah and there's only certain so that thing the stages the three stages trump said now that's not necessarily he's saying this is going to happen next week he just saying and whenever we start the pro i think that's what he's saying whenever they start the process open stage mm -hmm. one this is what's gonna happen then you're gonna have stage two then yeah. you're gonna have stage three but i mean i don't know if that and then um but my thing with governor kemp one thing ran across my mind was and i've even heard it now on the news what if they don't have enough money to pay people unemployment so if he's opening up the government opening up back um businesses saying it's safe to go and do whatever and but you saying i'm not going to do that i don't feel safe i want to get my unemployment and then unemployment say well your job is back open you can go back to work we don't we're not paying you unemployment anymore mm -hmm. i mean it, i mean that's something to think about too you know if mm -hmm. the state doesn't have enough to pay people unemployment and he's saying well let's just go ahead and open it back up 
They kind of put people in a hard place. They kind of have. They're to. gonna put them between they a rock to. and a hard place. Yeah. I mean, I, that's something to think about. And yeah. as soon as I started thinking that, then I started seeing it on the news. I said, "Well, I'm not the only one." All right, y'all. Let's uh, let's move on to the next topic, uh, which is the draft, which just happened yesterday. Or oh, yeah, I think yesterday was the last day. So it just yeah, happened it last day. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got the draft done. Um, you know, they did it digital digitally, uh, which was cool. I, don't, I, mean, right. I know a lot of people were watching. I know I watched it. Saw some of the commercials. I saw one of my friends on one of the commercials. It was pretty cool. Um, but yes, what did y'all think? What magic? I think you got some stuff about you know on the draft and just kind of what happened. So what did you think and what's your take you know, on that? Uh, well, I mean, it, like I said, they, they uh, before they actually did the draft, they did like a they did like a, a mock draft, like a trial run, mm-hmm. and they had some and they had some issues like well, like because um, if if you don't know, my team is the Cincinnati Bengals, and uh, we had the first pick, and so when they were doing the when he, when they were doing the mock draft. They had, they had, there was a, I think there was a two minute delay. Oh. When they picked into, and then before, like, it was, I guess it was like a two minute pause. Like there was a, like a buffering type thing for like two minutes. And so they, I guess they got those kinks worked because they didn't want that, they didn't want that to happen during the actual live. Mm-hmm. Draft. And so I guess they got that worked out. And so uh, they were able to, you know, do it very smoothly. You can tell. They sent all the players their draft package. Yeah, I saw that too. Was, well, they had the camera set up and mic set up and stuff like that. So how it was did, pretty cool. How does that work, Melvin? Because I, I was wondering, how do they know already what team? Because you got teams doing trades, teams moving up to get players, teams moving, you know, back. So did they just send the players all the caps of all the teams, or did they cap? Or did they already yes, know? Yes, because they could. Team? Okay. Because they right. They they send they send they all had like. They all had a, the all thirty two teams on there of uh, caps because okay. I uh, it was a couple of players saying they had two two caps of each team. I forget oh, I forget what it was, but it was a few players. They said they had two caps of each team, and okay. so they um so they were able to to do it like that. And um, but yeah, like I said they it, it worked just like the regular draft. Right. Right. So they did um, uh, you know they they. they like I say, it just worked like the regular draft, so they were able to, you know, call the players and let them know that, hey, we've, we've, we've selected you, and then it will pan over into the, into the, uh, into the, you know, their houses, and then, you know, Roger Goodell would get up there and say, hey, with the first pick, and he was just announcing it about all the players that got chosen. So, what's yeah, your, what was your that, takeaway, Melvin? I mean, y'all got a quarterback in the first round, and y'all got a pretty good receiver. Do y'all think y'all going to win a game this year? They did. I they did, was but... very happy with I, I was very happy with our uh with our, our picks. We we got a we got a quarterback, uh we got a very good receiver, so we, we got some offensive firepower. Uh okay. then we then we picked a linebacker after that. Uh and I actually seen that guy play. Um uh what's his name? He went to Wyoming, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. His name is uh let me go find him real quick. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? And why you Logan Wilson is his name. Okay. Um, but he um, and so uh, we got him, and we got a couple of other, and the like, rest of our picks was was defense, except for we got an offensive tackle, uh, which uh, you know, which is which is good to be able to, to project you know, since the, the quarterback we have. And so in 2011, uh, that's when we picked up uh, uh, Andy Dalton and AJ Green, uh-huh. and they went on that five year run. A five-year playoff run, uh, and so it's almost to me it's almost like a reincarnation right. of them mm-hmm. again. But I think there we have more parts to it. To I think if we have enough offensive weapons, because you know at, at one point it was just Andy and AJ, and AJ was the only right. receiver we had. And, mm-hmm. You know, most of the time he was getting double teamed, and it was difficult for him to get the ball. And it everybody else we had wasn't they weren't performing. 
And so we didn't have no we didn't have no firepower. But with us, what we got now, I think if we're able to, and then with the guys that we already have on the team, those guys actually step up. I mm-hmm. think we can have a pretty good offense, and then with us picking up some more players on mm-hmm. defense, that that'll give us even more depth. Because our defense is our defense has always been pretty decent. It's just that the offense right. wasn't able to to put up points to help the defense out. So, mm-hmm. so what do you guys think? Uh, you uh, those uh, those those Dallas fans. What do you <laughs> what do you guys think about you guys' picks? Uh, the you have some pretty good picks though. I the will, the I receiver really we that. picked up, I I was pleased. I was very pleased. But that did let me know they're not gonna bring back Davis. Uh, and what if they do? I mean, I was thinking about I, that. I was, what if they do? Because that'll be ridiculous. Because if you had CD Lamb, you have uh, what's that? that Amari Cooper and, and Amari Cooper, and you bring back this Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup. That's who I was thinking about. Yeah. And you bring back this. You, you got, got four a, death yeah. weapons. Yeah. And so I mean, you but, got and then and and right and you and you be able to. You, they could almost do whatever they wanted to then because they can run the ball and That's they can true. pass the ball. And so and they, y'all have a one deadly offense, I'm telling you that. So we, we'll have to see what you what you guys do. So, but yeah, it's going to be nice with CD, I mean, though. They, kinda, they said they compare CD to Dez, don't they? Um, just kind of the yeah, part of the style, do. the playing style. Mm-hmm. So C, CD's yeah, going to To me, to me, well, you know who CD is uh, – who is um, who he's most like? Uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. He, that, that, there you go, Melvin. He's mm-hmm. that type of player. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, you already saw what kind of hands he got when a, his girlfriend grabbed that phone. That was funny though when he took that phone. I was like, CD, and I was like, that's, mm-hmm. the way you the way he took it, the way he took it, that's like yeah. that. You, like she just reached over <laughs> and grabbed it. Like, who you think like, you like, Yeah, she was like, nah. <laughs> And I then his like mom that. on the other side of him was looking like she, his mom on the other side of him was looking. He she leaned over to somebody. She said, "She looked like she said, girl, did you see what this girl, little girl just tried to do?" Like she, she it know. was another one, <laughs> and it was another one that I can't think of the player's name either. But it, I, when I seen you that link, I know and, what you're uh, talking about. Yeah, where the, the, the girl was hugging all on him, and you couldn't even see his face. And you <laughs> see her mama. His mama grabbed her <laughs> and removed him from her. Ooh. Like she completely just, I can't think. I'm, a, I'm when I, I can't think oh, of players yeah. now. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you. But, uh, right. but yeah, at first she she was very nice about. She like, uh uh-uh, uh, baby, you you need to get up, baby, ba- baby. You need, and then she just grabbed underneath her arm, picked up and <laughs> pulled her out the way. Yeah. Move, move, <laughs> get out the way. <laughs> That's crazy. That's funny though. I do like CD Lamb though. I think yeah. he's gonna be he's I do too. strong too. I think they some of them thought he was the best receiver in the draft. Uh, but it was so deep. There's so many good receivers in this draft. Um right, I think C D's right. one of the top ones. So oh, Melvin said that too. Yeah. Yeah, they I think what because they all they all have different they all have different uh, abilities. Like to me, C D Lamb is a he he's an attack the ball person, just like the guy we got, T. Higgins. He's mm-hmm. one of those guys. He'll go up. He'll challenge the ball. He'll right. attack the ball. Um, and, and one thing about CD, he's actually really good right. at the catch. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. highlights. He's, he's really good, good at the catch. He catches the ball, and he's like, and he's like deceptively fast. He don't right. look like he's moving, but he actually be moving. He's strong. And then you got uh, Jerry Judy, uh, mm-hmm. right? And he's strong. You got Jerry Judy, who was like, uh, they were saying he's like one of the best route runners mm-hmm. they've seen in like mm-hmm. 20 years. Yeah, I seen and I when I watch his highlights, they are not lying. This dude yeah. can stop and start on a dime. He can fake you out one way, and then yeah. Henry Ruggs, yeah. probably one of the probably the yeah. fastest receiver to come out of there. He's fast, and so I mean, you got receivers. They have receivers all over the place. Those those three guys are like the top top three, and then T on top. Yeah, T Higgins and Justin Jefferson. Oh, and then uh, the next that that kid, yeah, Justin Jefferson. He's another really good route runner, and he's another person that challenges the ball in the air too. Yeah. Uh, then you got what you call the big receiver, Denzel Mims from Baylor. Yeah, from yeah. Baylor. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's really yeah. good too. So I mean, it's it was mm-hmm. quite a quite a few receivers out there this year. I mean, so it, and they're, the teams had their pick of this year. So and yeah. we'll, we'll see. They we'll see what what, what happens. Y'all, y'all ready for a you fool? 
All right, so um, this time Trump makes a this well, he makes a comment. And I'm sure y'all heard about it, talking about injecting disinfectant may help kill the virus. Um, even injecting like UV rays into the skin, to the body. Um, <laughs> of course, a lot of people are making memes, making fun of it. You know, how did did y'all try the disinfectant, the bleach, or whatever? I, I tried it the other day, and I, I feel I feel good. Okay. Because yeah. since it, my president said it, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Mm. <laughs> but, but what's sad, but what really was sad about that, people are going to li- actually, it, I think I've, I posted a, something, some people have already tried it. That's what yeah. I'm about to look for now. I think where well, there's like 13 people who, who, uh, who drank, uh, they drank uh, like Fabuloso or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah, but and I was like, what are, you, what are you, you, you dummies, you fools. You fools. Oh. It don't make no sense for you to, yeah. that don't make no You wouldn't have done it in, in any other reason, yeah. but now since it, it kills it on surfaces, but that's inside your body, you gonna have, you gonna cause something else to happen. All right. Mm-hmm. You yeah. gonna cause yourself to be dead. You can die from that, yeah. 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 It's yourself. chemicals, but Trump. The, the, and then the next day, he tried to contract that and said he said he was just trying to play with the media, the fake media. And he said he did not say that to Dr. Burks. And then they fact checked it. He was looking right at her, and she said, and then she said, as a treatment, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. my people, all I'm gonna say is, you can choose this man in November. The Continue being president, a man that tells you to drink bleach <laughs> or and inject yourself with bleach and or Lysol. And Lysol, Lysol had to even come out and say and make a statement say, Y'all don't do this. Right. And don't be trying to come back and, and sue us. You need right. to sue him. Sue him. He the one yeah. said it. Yeah, it so so it wasn't smart. It was not smart at all. It was not smart. And it, it makes it shows his true intelligence. I mean, if if he if okay, Trump, I'm we're gonna help you out. If you would have said wherever you are, like if if you would have said if you're going grocery if you're going grocery shopping, you bring the groceries back in. You you later he said spray them down after you done did all that. Clean the surface. That would have made you look a whole lot smarter than you looking saying. Uh, maybe you can just inject yourself with bleach or with disinfectant. It'll clear. It'll kill it quicker. Yeah, it'll kill it click quicker on it, like Melvin said, on the surface, but not in your your body, dude. It'll kill you quicker. It, yeah, it'll, yeah, yeah. There you go. It'll kill you. Yeah, yeah. yeah inject it. Yeah. You'll kill yourself. You gonna wake? You gonna wake up tomorrow dead? Wake up dead. <laughs> Not smart. Well, in the hospital, almost dead. Almost dead. Almost, yeah. Because you poisoned yourself. Exactly. Oh. You beat him straight poison. Yeah, it makes <laughs> no sense. Oh, yeah, yeah people. Um...